Hello everyone, welcome to another talk here. Today we're going to uh, work on triads and we talk a little bit about uh, triad pairs here. So um, that's that's often sort of an, you know, well, a topic that uh, kind of comes up uh, in the comments and questions here and there. So we're going to spend a few more uh, days on um, on Fly Me to the Moon, then we'll think about another tune, maybe another standard kind of tune here soon. So uh, maybe I'll start out by doing a little playing here and uh, I'm gonna try to mix it up, uh, try to use a different uh, bass kind of sound uh, this time and uh, change up the, the drums. So do a little playing on the uh, Fly Me to the Moon here, uh, just a little soloing up front. And uh, maybe I'll change the view around if it's going to co cooperate for us. And uh, so this will be up as a uh, podcast as well as a video for the member members of the YouTube channel. All right. It's not exactly the best angles here, but I'm going to to go with it. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, triads and maybe kind of different levels and four different um, core qualities and all that. Um, so start out with a little bit of a theory, theory I guess. Uh, this is aimed towards uh, improvisation topics. Uh, well, let's start with the first chord of Climbing to the Moon. Something you might notice when playing this A minor 7, so I'm playing a drop 3, A minor 7. You might notice that we have a, we have a triad right here. We have a C major triad in second inversion. Okay, and then we're playing it over this A minor. So that's another perspective on chords that's really actually pretty helpful. Okay, now let's take a look at, um, well, maybe we'll, what we'll do is exclude this uh, G here for a moment. Now if we were to take this A up an octave, let's see if we'd have an E minor triad. So within a uh, note that had, or within a chord rather, that has four notes. We have two triads. We have the A minor triad, and then we have the C major triad. And um, you can kind of keep moving along like that, but those are all parts of the um, the basic chord, A minor seven, for example. Um, but you can kind of keep moving up. So for example, you could have, uh, E, an E minor triad, right? And so that you can use triads um, to spell out different parts of uh, of the chord. So the further you go up, um, the more separated it might be from from the chord itself. So if we had um, sort of G, we get G major triad. We're on the sixth chord, so um, we go, let's say, um, from B. Okay, so we get the B diminished triad, so that would be pretty outside of, of that sound. So, um, so a really good way to um, practice all these is to maybe go through all the chords for um, or uh, fly me to the moon and just kind of work with uh, the key area and keeping in mind some of those secondary dominants as well as, as you go through. So if we have, let's say, uh, A minor seven. And we play A minor, that's all gonna fit very nicely. C, that will fit as well. You can see we go a little outside. So that's G major triad. And then a, a B diminished there. Okay. So if you kind of weave in and out of uh, different levels of, of dissonance based on that, um, then then you're gonna um, have some control over over what what you're uh, playing. So say um, it can kind of keep heading up that D minor. So that'll be pretty out too. Okay, F A C. That's getting little back into things, although the F is getting pretty dissonant. And then back on the A minor. So you kind of keep going up the scale from from wherever you're starting from, going every other note. Right? And you can even practice um, doing scales in thirds. And um, it's interesting that, that after two octaves, you you end up back where you started, on a starting tone anyway, um, but two octaves higher. 
So then you can kind of experiment with that. Kind of how that how that all sounds and comes together for things. All right, so um, let's uh, spend a little more time playing. Let's do another little bit of playing, and maybe we'll use a little more of some of these concepts uh, with us. So see if you can listen for some um, triads and things. Try to... Experiment with some other feels and stuff. Things we might have used. Um, but just kind of mix it up, mix up the tempo. I'll go to a slower tempo so we can maybe take note of of some of the um, tones that we're going over. And um, play around with different sounds. We have to change up the bass again. Uh, I think I probably would have wanted this anyway. Okay. Give this a go here. All right, so improvising, good. Mix things around, but uh, try to focus a little bit on uh, triads and kind of think about that sound.
Okay. So, um, you know, sometimes uh, playing with a, a specific thing in mind, it's uh, it may seem a little bit forced, but um, hopefully got some of those ideas across of, of using triads um, almost exclusively there in uh, at least uh, many passages. So, um, um, so you can use that to outline the um, solo. You can use it to maybe suggest different progressions. You can use it to just kind of simply step outside a little bit um, and to maybe create motion. So like we talked about yesterday, it's a way to get a, um, um, a sound that is sort of recognizable, um, at least this one aspect to it that I that I like. Uh, so you get sort of um, maybe a, a real recognizable tone or um, sound, triad. Um, and then you can use that to, to your advantage to kind of step out a little bit and um, come up with some different um, or outside passages. So um, now when we play, uh, we can think about all sorts of different um, uh, tr uh, triads, core qualities. Uh, we can think about um, uh, inversions as well. So let's talk a little bit about about all that. So kind of back to A minor here. Um, so like we said, we had a second inversion here, right? So you can take you know anything that you're playing and you play even as an arpeggio, but so this would be A minor, but taking the score sound, breaking it up as an arpeggio, playing a first inversion. So that's a way to kind of work with it and, and move things around. Um, and of course you can do that as well with uh, with other try it. So let's say we have that um, A minor again. And we use D minor. So there's you know even something you could try to do. So you can say and then over that same chord. So kind of using the same type of triad there. Different, different parts of the chord, so that you get kind of these varied um, sounds. Let's take another one. Say, um, let's say we play E minor second inversion. Okay, so we get a little, a little bit of. Um, Tension with uh, with that that chord. Um, now another um, kind of interesting concept, which maybe we'll get to in a little bit, um, is the idea of uh, playing really kind of outside by um, taking various inversions and and moving your next uh, next note to um, uh, maybe maybe a half step away, and then doing a different inversion, maybe different chord quality. Um, and um, I think that is a is a concept that's uh, um, I think George Garzon is uh, uh, if he came up with with that I, that whole idea or, or maybe it came out of his study of uh, Coltrane and the sort of developed into that um, angle on things. But uh, it's really interesting. So check check him out, and I, th I think he has, has some instructional material on that. It's called the triadic chromatic concept, or something like that. Um, so let's see if we can um, maybe do do some more playing with uh, triads and maybe use them to to not only outline the chords but step outside a little bit, like what we we're just talking about. Uh, let's change up our groove here and uh, maybe try something a little. Just a little different. 
see if I can find here. Look at kind of the basic. Uh, that's what this sounds like. This goes well. Uh, we'll see. See what this ends up sounding like. Maybe I'll take the risk here. Uh, all right. So let's play around with that a little bit and see if we can maybe try to step outside a little bit. issue here. Let's try that again. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I think what I need to do is turn that off. Third time's a charm, hopefully. Here we go.
All right, so I went ahead there without the drums. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, what's going on with it? Uh, but uh, gotta figure that out. Maybe because I was testing things. Maybe that's what it was. But hopefully, I'll get to work a little bit here in a minute. All right, so um, so there are some ideas. Uh, a little distracted there by the problems with the audio, but uh, hopefully some of that came across for you. And so basically, kind of the ideas, maybe take a take a try on. Okay, and then try another triad, maybe half step away from where you're leaving off. And then Let's kind of randomly pick another triad to work with. And you can break them up and to different uh, uh, order and all that. Uh, so take a triad, let's say C major. And then maybe move away from any one of those tones is going to move away from any one of those tones. And then try a new triad. Like from there. All right, so um, do a little, a little more playing here and then we'll wrap things up. And uh, so I hope you enjoy this talk here and um, See if we can. Hopefully, I have a feeling this may be working now. Um, and kind of strange because uh, it's been all been working kind of pretty well uh, recently. So not sure what's going on. We'll, See what happens here. All right, well, we'll have to, I'll have to do some troubleshooting on that. I'm not sure exactly what's going on because it was just working, but. Uh... Maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh... Just kind of drop it directly into here and see. Let's see if that helps.
checking out this uh, podcast and uh, and video on YouTube channel. Uh, it's a member-only video. Uh, thanks for those of you who are uh, members, and let me know if you have any questions um, on anything. I will have a great day, great practice session. I'll see you all in the next one.